Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for If Walls Could Talk. I'm Jill Bloom, group publisher of Walls and Ceilings, and always honored to welcome our legal expert, Trent Cotney, partner with Adams and Reese. Trent, thank you so much for joining me. Jill, it's good to see you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, yes. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's not hurricane season right now, but when it comes to hurricanes, especially Florida, Trent, I mean, clearly it's obtaining property insurance can be extremely challenging. And it sounds like a few weeks ago, Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis signed into law Senate Bill 2A, which took effect just January 1st. Uh, and it sounds like it could be confusing at first. Can you give us some insight and what do contractors need to know? Sure, and you know, this is... We talked about uh, some changes that Florida made here, not, it was just a few months ago. And, you know, it, it's become a crisis level situation here in Florida because property insurance is skyrocketing. Nobody wants to provide property insurance here because of the number of claims. So uh, the governor and his staff has, has aggressively worked to try to um, alleviate some of the problems and some of the concerns. And in this uh, this latest law that's been passed, there are a variety of things that affect you know both the contractor and the insurers. Uh, so just to kind of hit it high level, you know, from the insurer standpoint, one of the things that we've had a lot of complaints about from you know storm and restoration contractors is the amount of time that it's taking insurers to process claims to respond to homeowners. Uh, this law, what it does is basically shrink a lot of those time um, tables down. So it requires insurers to act quicker. It requires them to, to maintain detailed claim documents. Okay, So a lot of times, you know, they have to be able to say, I received the proof of loss on this date. I requested information on this date. And all that's important because we don't want insurers to delay processing these claims for homeowners. Uh, on the contractor side, they have effectively eliminated what's known as assignment of benefits, which is where a homeowner can assign uh, the proceeds to insurance policies to uh, contractors. Uh, that is effective for any policies um, or claims after January 1st, 2023. Um, but that was a big um, uh, push that affected a lot of the court system as far as uh, lawyers bringing those claims. Along those same lines, Jill, they have uh, completely eliminated the one-way attorney's fee provision that allows, uh, you know, uh, lawyers that are filing these types of claims to get attorney's fees. Yeah, so what does that mean? What that basically what that means is that you know the only way right now that you can file suit against your insurer moving forward is for what's known as a bad faith claim. So if an insurance company hasn't acted in good faith, that they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, uh, then there's a body of law that governs that. But if you are trying to, in the past, what you would see a lot is you would see an assignment of benefits where attorneys would be filing claims and they'd be filing claims because they know that ultimately there would be an attorney's fees award there. So they would be getting paid for whatever they do. They take it on a contingency basis. And that was driving a lot of the litigation, a lot of the increase in, in uh, pricing that we're seeing. So that's been cut away. Uh, there's a variety of other um, you know, very detailed provisions that kind of go into uh, what's what. And, uh, you know, what I did, Jill, is, is provided sort of a detailed article that kind of went into all the, the highlights of it. Um, so I think that's going to be a great resource for, uh, you know, contractors moving forward. Yeah, most definitely. Thank you, Trent. I just, uh, I was reading through that this morning. So we really appreciate your insight in that. If anybody wants to read more on that article, it, it will be posted on both Roofing Contractor and Walls and Ceilings for everyone to dive in and read that too. Um, but let's shift gears just a little bit, Trent. Let's talk about winter safety. I mean, that blizzard that went through New York was unbelievable. I mean, it felt like there was so I don't even know what the final number of feet, not inches, of snow that fell. You couldn't even see the cars that were in the road. Yeah, it's it, it was crazy. And, you know, unfortunately, we had um, a lot of phone calls from roofing contractors uh, in the Northeast and the Midwest uh, that had um, injuries related to the cold weather. The primary injury that we see is... Um, you know, black ice, it's the, it's your, uh, you know, on a surface, whether it's on a roofing deck or down below or wherever it is, and it warms up uh, in turn that freezes again, creates ice barrier and, and it creates a lot of slip hazards. So we see a lot of falls, we see a lot of slips and people hitting their heads. 
uh, big issue there. Obviously, hypothermia, uh, making sure that, that you're taking breaks, just like you would in the summer where you're taking breaks for hydration. You got to do the same thing to make sure that if you're working during those kinds of uh, that kind of weather, that you know your crew is being heated up, that they've got proper PPE, that, that they've got all the stuff that they need to stay warm. A lot of places, you know, I know in Chicago in particular, they don't they don't do a lot of work during the winter, um, and that's probably the norm. But if you are doing work, make sure that you are really mindful of the surfaces. Uh, as well as keeping your crew safe and, and warm while they're out there um, in the temperature. Yeah. And what about scaffolding? Did you have any scaffolding injuries? I mean, what if, if a contractor had scaffolding, like a wall and ceiling contractor, and they were needed to be outside? How mm -hmm. did that work? Did you get any so feedback we, on that? We did have one. Uh, we had one that um, the, the there was a, what happened in this situation is the uh, contractor did not give the crew person proper gloves and they were wearing like a, a cloth or knitted glove. Uh, they went to go grab a surface. That surface slipped um, on the scaffold scaffold railing, and they ended up uh, falling off the scaffold. You know, roughly ten feet. Um, you know, sustained some injuries. Ended up having to go to the hospital. And now we're defending the uh, the OSHA part of it. Um, you know, it is a dangerous surface when it's not cold and frozen, <laughs> but yeah. you add that to the mix, you add ice to the mix, you add snow to the mix, um, you know, it, and here's the other thing, Jill, is people don't realize that when it is that cold, your dexterity isn't what it is when, when you're warm, right? You, you lose a lot of the ability to react, you're, you're just not as mobile as you are when temperatures are, are room temperature. So really be mindful, do two box talks on and train your, your workers on making sure that they remain safe have the proper gear on and take breaks when needed. Yeah, no, there's no doubt. That's really important. So let's also talk a little bit about some stucco related claims that you were just mentioning that are really important, especially for our wall and ceiling listeners. Sure. You know, um, stucco is a great system, right? I mean, it's it's been around for a long time. It, it has uh, a lot of uses, you know, throughout the U.S., um, and it's very important that it be installed correctly. There's a lot of times where you see that you know, stucco hasn't cured properly or, you know, the three coat system hasn't, hasn't been applied or whatever it might be. And in those situations, especially in, in new construction, uh, where you've got stucco, um, you know, on the exterior, if you have cracks that form, make sure that you're doing your best to address those cracks as quickly as possible. Now, you know, and I know that most of these are just superficial, so it's fairly easy to you know, caulk them or, or seal them so that you, you don't have issues moving forward. The problem that I've seen, Jill, is that there are a lot of, you know, plaintiff's lawyers out there. Uh, we've seen this, especially in California and Florida, where they are filing suit for, you know, the home builders against home builders that, um, you know, where these cracks manifest oftentimes around windows, or you might see the stair step cracks when you have, uh, you know, block masonry. Um, they in turn bring in the sub. So they will bring in the stucco contractor, the framer, the roofer, so on and so forth. And it's just really important that you address these contractually, make sure there's an arbitration provision in there to dissuade those jury trials that plaintiff's lawyers want, and then make sure that you are aggressively responding to cure any of these issues you know, before they manifest into bigger problems. Great advice. Uh, thank you so much, Trent. Um, if anybody has any more questions for you, what is the best way to reach you? Sure. They can hit me up uh, via email, trent.cotney at arlaw.com. Sounds excellent. And if anybody has any questions for us, it's roofingcontractor.com, wconline.com. And while you're there, make sure you sign up for all our free content, whether it's our e-news, our website, uh, for our videos, just so you can always stay up to date on all the great content we're posting, especially like we are today with Trent, but most importantly, stay safe and healthy and stay warm. <laughs> and we'll talk to you soon.